Doctor Sai. Yeah, Doctor Sai. Alright, I'm going to work. Okay, so currently, Sai, uh, can you tell me briefly regarding your business and what is your core business in the industry? I have many businesses. Number one, I'm in the clinical line. I have clinics. Seeing and looking after the welfare of the patient. I have three clinics. One in KL, in the Steel Wangsa, another one in Old Plain Road, the third one in Bami. Right. And then I also do property business, which I buy the asset and I rent it out to people. And I live you know, in a financial line because I'm a director of one of the foreign banks known as Agrari Bank so our, our bank is only to remit money to overseas we have six branches in Malaysia So it's like, uh, in every business you have, for sure, you have some vision mission as well as objectives so what is your main vision, mission and purpose for your business? In every business, you have different sort of vision. Some, you want to help the community. Some, you want to make money and plus expand your asset capability. And some, you just being there to observe certain things to make yourself useful to the people. From what you say just now, it's like employee is just as, it's almost the same as important as the employer. Alright. So in your business you have like a few clinics and the number of real estate and certain investment. So normally uh, currently how many people are you employed? Currently, for the clinic, I have two doctor plus local doctor about five, and then the workers, clinic workers about ten, and the banking system, we have about total about uh, about forty workers. It's quite a lot of people looking for you. Alright, so basically, like, since the past few years, the economy is like going towards the downfall. So, I mean, like, in your business today, how do you estimate? Is it you have gained more profits or you gain more losses in the in current business economy? You went market up and down. My business all the time profitable because my business foundation I started in the right footing. Number one, my principle is not to borrow or to lend money. My principle is to make money and buy cash without bank borrowing. Even though I'm in the banking line, but I don't like to borrow money. So it's, like, it's quite interesting that you don't uh, use any financial debt or so on. It's like, because like currently most of the business or most of the business venture, they have investors and they have some other people to give them some model or even do some money for them to continue in their business and so on. So what do you think about it? It's like, what is your opinion regarding people see, borrowing money from the bank and so on? Most people they are so dependent on money. For me, I'm a very innovative person. I've been survived from younger days. I'm a survival man. I never believe of taking any money from other people. I will only find my own money and start with them. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting that uh, you have that initiative in it. So, 
uh, when when is your first time doing starting doing your business? Oh, yeah. I started doing business when I was a student. That time I was about eighteen years old. I was doing free medical in Notre Dame College, American Missionary College. Uh, in 1974 so I started going there to do pre-medical because I have the ambitious of becoming a doctor so I took my initiative to go to that country that time the country is known as East Pakistan the capital is Dhaka so I went there to to one doctor who worked in Malaysia. So I went there alone, <coughs> just to get my ambitions done. <laughs> it's kind of amazing things when you have some initiative by your own and so on. And so basically, how do you save money no. to make sure that you have enough capital for okay. you? That time, that, that time I really don't have money, even <laughs> my parents cannot support me. So I'm becoming very innovative. You see, people say empty pocket <laughs> will make a person very innovative. Yeah. If full pocket, the brain doesn't work. Only the pocket works and the money works. So at present, that's the problem with the present generation. They only think without money, they they can't do anything. But I started without money, zero. <coughs> you see, when I was in the foreign country, I went around asking them, get more friends, what they want to buy from Singapore, from Thailand. So, they ordered their product because the country is quite restricted on bringing the product. So I find out, I went to Singapore, they pay me the ticket because I have international passport and easy for me to go in and go out. That's the advantage of being a Malaysian. So they order different kind of thing from Singapore, different kind of thing from Bangkok, Thailand. So that's how I started the business. And I made my first million during that time, during I was student. At, at 18 yeah. years old. Nowadays, people like the youngsters, they have like the eagerness to do the business and so on. But eventually, some of them have this kind of ability where all right, I should wait for the right time. And even during the economy downfall, some of them are like the business may not be good at that time. So what do you think? What is the best opportunity for the youngsters or even other people to gain experience in starting their own venture? There is no right time and wrong time. Always there is a right time, provided you're willing to do it. There's so many opportunities everywhere. Why? The illegal can come in and they can make money. Why? Because they are innovative people. Those who came in, they can do very well. You can see the Indonesian, the Bangladeshi, the Indian, they own a big restaurant in Malaysia. They come here as a general worker. The Bangladeshi, they have a lot of shop importing goods. So, these are the innovative people. So, if you get some person which only hoping to have money, then start working, they can never be a success in that person. So, Mr. people, alright, so nowadays, it's like students or even the dogs, they have this kind of attitude where, alright, I should wait for my friends and I should follow my friends, what are they doing and so on. So, for your opinion, because lately, like, this type of generation nowadays, they have this thinking like, all right, I should work until I'm 55 and have enough money and retire. But for business people, maybe they have like different kind of attitude where they want to keep 
struggling on, keep working, even though they are already 55 or 60. And what do you think about it? What are your comments regarding it? As a person, you must know what is your capability, number one. There are three kinds of people in the business line. One, they have the mind of entrepreneurship. Another, number two, they have the mind of managerial. Number three, they have the mind of technology. For example, the people in number three condition, they have the mind of doing things like carpenter, like you know, the chef cooking, like you know, all those people crafting. These are known as people who have technology. Number two, managerial. The managerial is the people who can manage. Number three is the entrepreneur who do the thinking. How to manipulate and how to take risks and buffer on certain things if the risk coming. So these three kind of people, you cannot change them from one post to another. A business will collapse if you put a technology people in an entrepreneur. The business definitely collapse. If you put managerial in technology, collapse. If you put managerial, so you cannot interchange them. So the first basic thing I'm talking about organization. You must identify what kind of capability the person can do. If for a person to do business. He must know what is his capability. If he is a chef, he can cook well, don't go for entrepreneur. Employ people to manage him so that he control from the kitchen. If he's a managerial, he become a manager and let people work for him and people advise him. If he's an entrepreneur, he employ these two people, managerial. That is the success of a person if he can identify all this. Hi. So next, so, uh, in the current days, customer have been one of the key uh, the key point where the business needs to survive based on their customers. So how do you attract your customers to come to your clinic as well as your other businesses? It's very simple. People will come if they have the affinity towards the place. What is your, for example, a restaurant? It has a signature food. Yeah. Then the restaurant become very successful. Okay, like my clinic. The patient come, I will treat them, and I will tell them, you can pay any time you want. If you don't have money, you don't have to pay. And if I give you medicine, it doesn't cure, you don't need to pay me. So, they come because I'm the only clinic who do this. Right, so you mean that uh, by using this kind of strategy and this kind of management things, do okay. you think it attracts people? I interrupt you. So for property business, people are renting my property. So, I manage them very simple. Any problem, I will do for them. Any listing, any problem, they call me, I will take care. And most of my apartment is fully furnished. So that people feel comfortable. Once they stay, they don't want to move. But most people in Malaysia, if they have apartment, they don't want to do all this because they want to squeeze. When you want to squeeze your customer, you can never get back your customer to come back. Okay, so uh, for instance, the renting, the renting part where people rent your apartment and so on. So normally in Malaysia, we have this issue where, alright, for instance, in the house they have a leaking of water or they have any electricity problem. So it means that uh, for you yourself, once the customer complain about it, what do you think? It means that. They should pay you for it upfront, or you straight away respond to their inquiry. I respond, and they don't have to pay. I will do it. 
free of charge even though it's their fault even though they have fault okay in a set that's how you attract your customers and how they keep loyal to you oh you did ask me question how i get that partner yeah you see at that time i don't have money i can't buy cash so the best is to look for the cheapest apartment this part is very important All right. so i look around at that time eight years ago eight nine years ago i started buying apartment which cost only fifteen thousand twenty thousand eighteen thousand because that was the second cycle of downfall yeah. because i calculate the downfall at that time when there's downfall, there's cheap, I start collecting. People say I'm collecting rubbish. Actually, I'm collecting to keep the good rubbish and to make it, it happen. My first house, I never buy. Even though I have money, I just rent. Because rental is cheaper than paying to the bank for buying a house. Kind of amazing things when you say uh, during the downfall, you take the advantage of the downfall and turn it into your own benefit. Like most of the business people, before they start their business, they always have uh, this kind of challenge where people don't believe in them and people say sometimes their idea is quite ridiculous and so on. So, what do you think? If taking a risk is worth it, is it worth it to take a taking risk? Taking a risk is not worth it. You must know, if you buy something, whether you can sell tomorrow at the same price. If cannot, you don't buy. For example, you don't need a lot of money to start property business. You must have innovative idea. For example, I give you an example. I find a strategic shop. So I know this shop can do very well. I, the owner want to rent it out. So I meet the owner, I said I want minimum 18 years to rent. And the agreement will be solid. You cannot terminate the agreement. 18 years. So I make the owner happy. Every three years, I will increase automatically, automatically 10%. Because I know, I study, this place is good. So I start investing little money on deposit and rental. And today, it's true enough, from that one rental, I can make three to four thousand ringgit a month. Because the difference between I re-rent and paying the owner the rental. Alright, interesting about it. And is that, alright, currently, uh, there are a lot of businesses as well in the market and for the past 10 years or the past 5 years there's a lot of business collapse they have a problem with bankruptcy and so on so for you to survive in the industry and the business so what do you do that to compete with other competitors and and to keep surviving in this business you don't need to compete you must have your own branding you don't need to compete your own branding, you don't need to advertise because it is your service. How you handle people, people to people. Because I'm not a very good company, yeah. I need to advertise it. No, I just go for a very, people, it, people call it minor market, niche market. You see, people like to open supermarket, <coughs> all these big, big yeah. market hypermarket but actually in reality if I do this business I will just open a small outlet because this outlet can make better money than a supermarket yeah. but retailer is the most important people usually they have big ambitions they go to the bank they want to borrow 1 million 2 million 10 million then only they can start business wrong footing they must start something from zero, start build up. If they do this thing, they definitely they can find the solution. No bank borrowing for the initial business. 
Okay, it's like normally when you start up a business, for sure you need to invest some money in it. So, do you? How can you estimate when can <coughs> you get back your more uh, the your investment? Where can you get the return of investment as well as for how long do you wait for you to get back your money that you invest in? You see, my investment always very small, very very small. For example, I told you my first property apartment I bought only for 50,000 million yeah. and I write it up at the time 190 million so for cash 15,000 I get 190 is extra money yeah. every month but today that apartment I'm writing for 600 million within 8 years and that property appreciated to become 200,000 million another thing is if you have a house, so if you have a shop lot or you're renting a place for your business. So normally if you want to get a low price, you will find somewhere that is not being developed yet. But how can you estimate that the place that you rent out is going to be profitable in the future? You have to study. That's where it comes to the knowledge. You have to know all the what is around you. You see, you don't buy empty land yeah. because empty land is the worst investment. You must not buy drawing. People draw a castle, draw a house. You start buying that because I never buy drawing. I never buy empty land. I only buy solid thing. By tomorrow, I know that property going to going to pay me back. So my estimated of getting back about three to five years to get back my my investment. All right. So okay, especially nowadays, uh, the world keep changing and the technology keep improving from time to time. So how do you apply that kind of system into your business? I mean, like you keep innovating and so on to ensure that you always be in the same era as the other businesses so very easy I use the platform for example people pay rent to me very easy WhatsApp they make payment and I will advise them through apps yeah. and then they can bank in direct online everything online even I pay people all online, so I don't need to see people. Yeah. So I'm using the technology. For example, if patient want to pay me, I give them the account number. You can pay me anytime you want. So everything, I just check my account. I don't need to run around. Mm -hmm. So I save on employing people yeah. to to go around and collecting rental. You know, for a person to call the patient, pay because. I just let it loose. Yeah. Okay? But, all right. As you said just now, it's like you don't mind if people don't have money and then they don't pay you at that time. And from my observation and as well as some of the readings, it's quite crucial that to survive in a business, you need the money. But if they mm -hmm. don't pay you, how can you get the money? And how can you survive? Mm -hmm. That's why you must know what is your product. You must know whether the product is really good for that person. So if I know my medicine can cure and they always need me, so why not? Because I not I'm not going to extort them. I give you pay me money. I'm let, letting it loose. I never find even a single patient that owe me never pay. Till today never. It's quite astonishing. And all right, so in every organization, for you to hire people, normally they have the HR, the human resources department. So for you yourself, do you have any people in the HR department or do you yourself hire people? Yes, I employ the best people. I never employ like people say, pay peanut, you get monkey. Yeah. I give good salary, provided 
they are good specialized my clinic i got accountant qualified accountant master in account yeah. the nurses qualified nurses staff nurses the lab technologies my my bank we employ chartered accountant becoming ceo at least they have accounting license even though we pay a lot so we don't mind we must for example we need due diligence people we pay them we pay them better than any other bank so when you pay them they will work hard for you and they will really use their mind to work because these are people at the stage of managerial and technology people okay, so all right next thing is like uh how if your staff do have a problem in let's say they have a discipline problem or they come late to work uh, what is your action for it and how can you overcome this kind of problem where they have some discipline issues or so on so far i don't have this sort of problem because if they cannot come they call me just i just tell them to, to get off to take the off day because i sympathize on family people yeah. i give them they want one week holiday they can take they want one month they can take so you have this kind of visibility in your company so it's like most of the company nowadays uh, for example like Petronas or so on the big businesses if they have this kind of thing where they have the annual leave for their staff and so on so do you have like a specified annual leave for your workers and employees? yes I have I have annual leave, I have medical benefit, I have insurance for them and I will advise them how to do a proper investment for themselves. I will always try to help them to move into a next stage even though I'm going to lose him yeah. or her but I always give them chances. For example, one of my nurses, she's good in making you know the cake, all that. I advise you can do this part time. Even if you have big orders, you can come late to the clinic. No problem. Okay. So, all right. Uh, I always heard that. All right. If you have a clinic and you have a pharmacy and so on. So how can you obtain the medicine, the vitamin and some of the drugs? Do you have like a supplier or anything? Oh, we, we order from a, from a, this registered company, patent company. Yeah. For example, Zulik, the biggest supplier. Diplom, Pharmaniaga. Pharmaniaga is a generic <laughs> company, yeah. which I hardly use because they are mainly on hospital and I consider third class drug yeah <laughs> but <laughs> I only do the best I only my clinic always got patent product even vitamin I order directly from US so I give a good vitamin a good medicine and patient happy because they can't get it here yeah. here people believe making more money give cheap thing making good profit give bad food to people that's why they fail they never think the small profit and in future they will make big profit they only think short term they must yeah. make profit they give you all the junk food the cheapest food available they give you the cheapest medicine available you go to the clinic you will find all the cheapest stuff, <coughs> cheapest, which sometimes doesn't work. So these are the things that you have to consider in doing a business. Right, but okay, for instance, you have a quantified amount of drugs and medicine at your clinic. So, do they have like a specific time where it will be expired or something? Yeah, definitely. They have to record. And how do you overcome that? Because like. If you have so many drugs which is expired, and how can you overcome the losses from the drugs that you order? Because like it's ordered from the overseas, it's imported to Malaysia, so this must be very, quite costly at some times. Yeah, I don't order bulk. I order as when required. 
and I always keep minimum because of the storage problem. Yeah. Because of the financial of keeping it, you know. Yeah. So I don't order big volume. I let patient wait two weeks for the drug to come. For example, Malaysian pattern product is very easy. Today I order tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, right. Thing will come, so I don't need to keep. I keep only the, you know, that fast moving, yeah. and the one that really required. So I keep, and that also minimum. Alright, most of the business people they have a mentor in their life, in order for them to involve in the business itself. So do you have a mentor for yourself? Yeah, I have a mentor. I have a mentor and I always remember. Uh, he said, yeah. never lend, never borrow. If you lend, if you borrow, you can control, you don't borrow people. Yeah. Lend, if you lend to the people, you will lose two. If you don't lend, you will lose only one. Okay? Alright. That means? If you lend, you will lose the money and you will lose the friendship. The friend that you lend will never come and see you again because you don't want to pay you. If you don't lend, maximum you will lose friendship. You never lose your money. So, the person who said that is told Dr. Mahathir. Yeah. Alright. Uh... Alright. So, now I know how your business develop and how do you manage your customer and so on. So, the last question that I'm going to ask you is like what is your suggestion for I mean like what is your opinion and your suggestion to youngsters just like all of us for us to involve in business very easy you must go for a small business first learn about the business yeah. if you're really interested then I will have to do the deep thinking for you yeah. because <laughs> business is just you go attend a motivation course and you start doing, cannot. You must think. You must know the market. You must know your value of knowledge. Yeah. For example, people who are good in cook, they open stall, roadside. That means they don't value their knowledge. So what they get? They just get the people who, they can't be successful. Yeah. If I open restaurant, my target, is to sell the restaurant and make the money. Yeah. So they must know what they are in. Yeah. If they know what they are in, and they know where is their direction, step by step, then only they can achieve their goal. Oh. If not, they cannot. That I give you the example of restaurant. Yeah. To open a restaurant, you see, if you start, then you have make your money then if you are not capable you do something that you know to, to work for people once you gain the knowledge then you make your own opening a very simple you just go and rent 20 ringgit you know place in front of some restaurant start doing your your food and then the next step you must buy the property of the restaurant you're going to create because when you sell the business for two three hundred thousand yeah. then you rent it out so you make on the rental plus you make on the business royalty yeah so that should be the target where you are heading you know the 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 bearing the bearing must be correct so if you don't have the bearing if you want to travel on the open sea, you don't have target where you want to go. So yes. you you will be just you know float. See, when you don't know what, where you want to go, yeah. if you have the bearing, you know you will try to reach target. your target. You know it will be big win or what you will try to reach. Okay, so it's like most of your advice are very useful, and now we all know how the business is going and so on. So I really appreciate your time for you to have a time to talk to us and for this interview session. 
So I would like to thank you for okay. your time and we appreciate it. Okay. And we try to use all your advice so must for remember, our movies as well. Must remember, no borrowing. <laughs> no borrowing. <Yeah>. No lending. <laughs> That's the successful.